After the recent release of some official The Flash trailers, everybody has been complaining about the quality of its visual effects. But are they really that bad? Are the VFX companies pushing themselves too far? Or as viewers, have we just become more critical? Ever since the TV series started back in 2014, The Flash has had a history of complaints of bad CGI and judging by clips like this and this. And all these, you can see that the complaints are well founded. But creating visual effects is a lot like any other manufacturing job. There are three options available, but you can only choose two. They can be cheap, they can be quick, or they can be good. The TV series consists of around 20, 45 minute episodes a year. This means they have a little over two weeks to film and finish each episode. So the visual effects have to be done extremely quickly. Also, each episode costs around $3 million to make. Now this may sound like a lot, but compared to Game of Thrones at between 6 and 15 million an episode, Stranger Things Season 4 at 30 million an episode, and The Boys at 11 million an episode, it's actually pretty cheap, so if the Flash episodes are quick and cheap, the VFX can't possibly be that good. However, as the series gained popularity, its screenplays became more fantastic, and so the visual effects had to become more spectacular. You can see clear evidence of this in Season 3 with Grodd and Gorilla City. They had to build the entire 3D environment and different types of gorillas to populate it. They had to use crowd software and create different animation cycles of the gorillas cheering. And Solovar had to be built and animated to combine with the footage shot on the green screen soundstage. But if the VFX have to be more spectacular, but the time constraints and the budget remain the same, the quality of the VFX has to go down. And this becomes apparent here and in the later seasons. Now, the up-and-coming Flash movie has a big budget of around $220 million. This is about the same as The Dark Knight Rises, Man of Steel and Wonder Woman 1984. So, if the VFX aren't cheap, they should be both quick and good, right? Well, unfortunately, the Flash movie project has been plagued with issues since it was announced back in 2014. Yes, you heard right, 2014. Its original release date was March 23rd, 2018. Since then, they've changed directors four times. First Seth Graham Smith, then Rick Famuyiwa, then John Francis Daly and Jonathan Goldstein, and finally, Andy Muschietti. They've also rewritten it three times, first Seth Graham Smith, then Joby Harold, and finally, Christina Hodson. They have repeatedly postponed it and delayed it until principal photography eventually started in April 2021. However, since then, Ezra Miller has been involved in scandal after scandal, and this lowered the public's opinion of him to the point where Warner Brothers were considering axing the entire project a la Batgirl. Having a stop-go project where the deadline is constantly moving, and sometimes you don't even know if the movie is even going to be released, isn't good from a VFX point of view. And The Flash's release date has been constantly changing, from March 2018 to July 2022, then June 2022, then November 2022, and then June 23rd, 2023. Now there's a rush to finish for June 16th, or is it June 15th? Well anyway, this rush shows in some of the trailer's visual effects. But let's not get too judgmental. These issues could be corrected in the final movie. If you look at this scene where Barry saves Iris, the visual effects are actually pretty impressive. They set up multiple lights on set to get the light bouncing off his face. The car, the truck, and most of the background are all CGI and very realistic. Iris's hair also had to be CG to be able to control its speed and manipulate it in flash time. The same was true for her clothes too, and the entire scene from the debris floating around to the way they try to understand the physics of flash time by having him gently and smoothly turn and move her around really adds to the realism and makes for a thoroughly convincing effect. And if they have enough time, this could end up being true for all of the effects of the movie, but even if it isn't, we still get to see the greatest Batman that has ever been, Michael Keaton. You wanna get nuts? Let's get nuts.